Welcome to Taking Alginate Impressions, also called Preliminary Impressions, which is the first technical skill in the fabrication of dentures. In this video, we're taking preliminary impressions on a completely edentulous individual. Ensure that the room is clean and sanitized, and that you have all you need for the procedure, and that you're maintaining proper asepsis during the entire procedure. Before measuring the powder for the impressions, fluff the canister to avoid a condensed material, which will result in an uneven mix. Measure for the maxillary and mandibular, upper and lower, with clean gloves, so that you don't contaminate the material. I recommend to have the patient lubricate their lips slightly, to avoid cracking during the pulling and manipulation of the soft tissue. Grab a sterilized or single-use tray that you suspect will fit your patient. Rinse the tray under cold water and try it in the patient's mouth. Observe that there is clearance all around the oral structure without obstruction from the tray. Now you're prepared to take the impression. Measure the water required. I recommend to start with the lower. It gets the patient used to having the alginate in their mouth without triggering their gag reflex like the upper impression might. Ensure that the powder is incorporated into the mix and that you achieve a harmonious mixture. Collect the material, split in half, and load the tray from both sides. For the smear technique, grab excess material on your fingers and push it into the sulcus in other hard to reach areas. Then place the loaded tray in the patient's mouth, retracting the cheeks to allow proper access. Place the tray from the back towards the front. Once seated, get the patient to stick out their tongue and move the tongue side to side to achieve basic borders. Move the cheeks around to eliminate any air bubbles that may get captured during tray insertion. Hold in position until the material is set. I used fast set, which needs about a minute in the mouth. It should get hard enough that it won't pull once you remove it. As you can see, the material I chose changes color as the setting process takes effect. It assists in determining material setting time. But don't rely on the color change alone. Nothing is more accurate than feeling the material with your hands. The material should be somewhat stiff when it's ready. Remove the impression, and make sure you're not banging the tray on the patient's opposing arch. That might hurt a bit. At this point, ask how your patient is doing, and if he or she needs to pause to rinse or wipe their face. After you assisted the patient, confirm you achieved the desired impression. You will want to see that all the necessary landmarks are captured, the absence of large voids, or bubbles, and that the impression didn't get warped or pulled during removal. Rinse the impression, then spray it with an appropriate disinfectant and set it aside. Now it's time for the upper impression. Measure the equivalent water required and use the same mixing technique to achieve a harmonious mix. Collect all, or at least the majority of the alginate on the spatula and load from the back of the tray, pushing towards the front. 
This will ensure you're not putting the majority of the bulk on the back of the tray, which could cause the patient to keg. Here you can see the glaze technique. So just before you're inserting the tray in the mouth, run your gloved hand under cold water to create a smooth surface on the material. Place yourself in front of the patient, retract the cheek, and visualize the tray placement. Insert the tray, but don't push it into place yet. When you're relatively confident that it's not too far in or too forward, make your way behind the patient and put the tray into place from the back to the front. Grab the cheeks and border mold gently. This will pop out any air traps. Encourage the patient to bring their head forward and breathe through the nose you should feel their breath on your thumb. From time to time, you will have a patient with a strong gag reflex. Even so, do not remove the tray until the material is fully set. If you do, the impression will fail and you'll have to start again, prolonging the patient's discomfort. It sometimes helps to distract them by getting them to wiggle their toes, lift their left leg in the air, or to alternate lifting their hands. Or try counting down for them, or giving words of encouragement. You're doing well, it's almost over, this is the worst part, I promise. Whatever you can think of that will get their mind off the awkward sensations in their mouth. Now that the material is set, remove the tray from the patient's mouth. You might have to break a very strong suction, this is a good thing. It usually means you have a good impression. Reach with one finger to the very back, towards the tuberosity, and try to dislodge the tray. If it's still stuck, get the patient to vibrate their soft palate junction by going, ah. Uh. Once the tray is out, take care of the patient's comfort first, and then assess your impression. Once you're confident you have the impressions you need, it's time to let the patient get on their way. Assist the patient to ensure they're presentable by helping them clean off any residue of the impression. Provide them a mirror, and of course, return their dentures if they have any. Your patient will probably be relieved that you're done. The next step is to start the lab process for the fabrication of upper and lower complete dentures by pouring up the impressions into stone models. That will be the subject of a future video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.